Oklahoma Gardening is a production of the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the land-grant mission of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University, dedicated to improving the quality of life of the citizens of Oklahoma through research-based information. Underwriting assistance for our program is provided by the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping to keep Oklahoma green and growing. Welcome to Oklahoma Gardening. We often show you glimpses of the various gardens here at the Botanic Garden at Oklahoma State University. But today, I'm going to take you on a virtual walking tour of the entire gardens. So sit back and enjoy the AC as I show you around. that you are here on your virtual tour of the Botanic Garden. We of course wish you were here in person, but we're happy to have you regardless. Um, I want to tell you first a little bit about this space because this is somewhat new in the last year or so. We've started putting plants out here for sale. So if you happen to come visit, you might want to check out this spot. That is Cowboy Kitty up there that's working hard, obviously. Um, but he's our resident feline that keeps our mouse population down. So. Anyway, we wanted to share a little bit about the Botanic Gardens. I know some of you probably have been here and some of you might not have ever seen this place. Um, we are just located west of Stillwater's main campus off of Highway 51. And you're more than welcome to come at any time. Our hours are kind of dawn to dusk. So as we go into the main gardens here, I want to tell you a little bit about some of the different spaces that you'll be seeing. So we're standing here on what's kind of touted as being the most technologically advanced lawn. Um, Dr. Luanella, who is a professor here on campus in the horticulture department, and he's also the director of the Botanic Gardens, really loves um, irrigation. So he's kind of gotten into the technology here and has um, demonstrated some of that right here. So we have in this space, typically if you were to irrigate it, you would have spray heads around the perimeter and then some down the center. But in this space, we only have two spray heads. There's one right down here um, that will pop up. And this one right here is able to water this whole area right here in a radius. And what's unique about this particular spray head is when it pops up, instead of it throwing the water you know, a set amount at 10 or 15 feet, it's going to change that radius based off of the perimeter and you can mark that on your iPhone. And so it's very uh, techy if you're into that sort of thing. So what's neat about this is it will spray the 15 feet and then when you've marked the perimeter is a sidewalk, it will bring in that radius, that spray and it will not get the sidewalk wet. And so you can see how kind of jagged our sidewalk is here um, and how it varies with the distance and it will come all the way down to what is about four feet of a spray distance here. While this is a little bit more uh, expensive, this particular head, you can see that you won't have to put as many spray heads in on this sort of a system. The other thing too is you don't have to trench as much because you're just putting water to one spray head versus around the whole perimeter. Now when we do demonstrate it, depending on the winds, you know, we do have Oklahoma winds that still will catch some of that water and it might blow it on the sidewalk. Um, as we walk along here, there's another thing that's techy about this lawn. Um, and right now he's sleeping, but we have Frank Eaton grass over there. If you don't know who Frank Eaton is, um, that is the name of Pistol Pete. And so Frank Eaton over here will dock himself when he needs to be charged. If you're familiar with the Roombas, basically we have a Roomba for mowing our lawn. A lot of people are concerned about the safety of it. Obviously we were when we first brought him out here. It's very safe. Um, you cannot pick it up, it's too heavy. Um, and even if somebody tried to get their fingers under there, it would just maybe make a, a paper cut sort of a cut on you. 
So what it is, is it's really not mowing the grass, it's just gradually trimming the grass all the time. Um, and it mows this whole space here. So the reason why it knows its perimeters is basically like one of those pet wireless fences. So we have a cord buried around the perimeter of the grass here. So behind me here as we walked around is our Oklahoma Proven Garden. So we have a lot of Oklahoma Proven Plants. If you're not familiar with that program, it's been going for 20 plus years now. Every year they've picked an annual, a perennial, um, a woody shrub, and also a tree. And so if you're new to Oklahoma or as master gardeners, you might get people asking about what plants are good for Oklahoma. This is a really good go-to list to identify plants that do well. After 20 years and picking four to five plants each year, it's quite an extensive list now. So we've got um, annuals and perennials. We've got cat mint in here, salvia gregi. Um, we've got some euphorbia, diamond frost euphorbia. We don't and have all of them on display here, um, but we try to rotate them through here. We also have Tacoma, which is um, in the pot behind us, and then our Arizona cypress tree, which is one of our trees that we like to um, showcase here in Oklahoma. So a lot of times people want that blue color from a blue spruce, but blue spruce don't really handle our heat too well here in Oklahoma. So Arizona cypress is another good tree that works well um, and will provide you with that blue color. So, um, oh, and before we go to our next garden, I want to introduce somebody new here. This is Linda Carrier. Um, she is our new garden manager. So um, Jane Carter, who's been here for 10 years, um, recently retired this spring. And so we're happy to welcome Linda Carrier, who's been with OSU for a couple of decades, 21 years. So um, she's been here quite a while. She's been on the research side of things, doing a lot of research down at Perkins with Dr. Lynn Brandenberger and vegetables and things like that, And but is a gardener at heart. Um, Thank you. Good seeing you, Linda. As we move along here, this is what we call our Tri-B Garden. Um, Tri-B standing for birds, butterflies, and bees. So this is sort of our pollinator garden. Um, you can see we've got a good mix of flowering perennials and annuals in here. Um, this is one of the cat whisk whiskers uh, plants. And then we also have uh, Cestrum up there, which is the nice kind of pale orange. We've got some Turks caps mixed in here. Um, and then the bat face kufia down here, which is a nice pop of red. Um, it gets its name because it looks like a little bat face on there. So as we go through this garden, I always like to tell people it looks a little bit different than maybe some of the other botanic gardens that you've gone to. Um, this originally started as the studio gardens for Oklahoma gardening. Over the last 30 plus years, it has sort of morphed into its own Botanic Garden, which is great. We enjoy all the different people that come in. But now we still use this as a studio gardens. And so what you see here is basically different sets or vignettes for us to shoot our show. And so while at a regular botanic garden, you might see larger spaces that kind of transition a little bit better. We have a Japanese garden right next to a patio garden, right next to an annual uh, kind of theme garden. And so each one of these are different sets, if you will. Um, the Japanese garden is a beautiful design that's been here for, again, a decade or so, at least, um, if not longer. The patio garden is a nice mix of Mediterranean and succulent plants, a very arid look. Um, so something that can really take a hot, dry climate. And then, of course, our color garden is just a beautiful garden that really displays all the tropical colors um, and is just a nice showcase. So some of these gardens will rotate out um, over the years, but some of them will tend to stay the same as well. But this allows us the flexibility to do different segments on the show. So as we come out of those three kind of set gardens, we come into another space that we call the concepts garden. Um, this particular space is kind of my little playground in order to be able to do different things for the show. Sometimes we have to do things in advance of when they actually would be done in the garden so that it has that lead time in order to air at an appropriate time for the viewer to be able to do it in their own garden. 
So this is kind of that space for us to tear things up and do different projects and stuff. And so anything that you've seen on the show, a lot of times you'll find in this space. We, um, it might not look like a lot of projects, but it actually represents probably 40 different segments. Anywhere from putting in steel edging to creating a DG crushed granite um, patio space to keyhole, uh, keyhole gardens over there. This is our spiral herb garden to different types of raised beds, container projects. Um, we've got a lot of different uh, types of projects in here. So we're working on doing some signage that links QR codes to those actual videos so that when people will be able to come, you'll just be able to scan that and actually pull up the video while you're looking at the project out here. So as we come across here, this is constantly changing. So, you know, it might be here one year and it's not going to be here next year. So that's something to check out. There's always going to be something new here. As we come across here, one thing you'll see here is our one of our smaller All America Selection trial gardens. Um, this was a quilt garden last year. Uh, with everything going on, we just kind of put some AAS uh, plants in here. And so these are some annuals. So this bed will again change. All America Selection is a program that we're a part of where we display uh, different plants that they have proven throughout the country work really well. So if you see those signs, that's a good example of another plant that does well in our region. So you might check that out also. As we go down here, we'll take a look at the Sun Perennial Garden, which gets a lot of full uh, early morning sun and high noon sun. It gets a little bit of shade in the afternoon, um, but it's got a nice display of Asclepias and other Sun Perennials. As we walk around from our Sun Perennial Garden, you'll walk past our vegetable garden and also our new orchard um, and fruit garden, so, which is surrounding the fenced-in vegetable garden. So that's down here. It's a really nice way to get kind of different ideas on how to garden and, and make a vegetable garden and what's in season and what time. Um, and again, all of this serves as a studio. So when I'm doing vegetable gardening, that's when I'm down there. Here next to us is our rock garden. Um, and this particular garden, actually, one of our previous hosts, Steve Owens, put in when he was hosting. Um, and it's still a nice example of a rock garden. Then as we come over here to our left side, there's a lot of kind of hidden areas back here under our cedar trees. We've got a nice uh, playhouse for kids. We've got a water pump feature and we've got it planted with lots of color because kids love color. They kind of like these weeping things and spaces to hide. And so kids can really enjoy getting in here and playing. There's some swings underneath those cedar trees and things like that. So if you have children, this is definitely a place to check out. I know my little girl always enjoys coming here. So as we come in here, uh, next to us is the herb garden. Um, and this actually just went through a renovation about six years ago now. I think right before I came on as host. Um, and it tripled in size. And so it's a really nice example of how to really set off those herbs make them like a kitchen garden. We have the focal point of the lemongrass and then behind us here, we all love mint, but if you've ever grown mint, you know you need to keep it in a container. And so what's neat about this is to um, see if you can guess which mint it is you're smelling. So every year we buy these in, so we know that they haven't uh, changed or anything like that, because sometimes mints can change as they evolve if you let them just spread. But these are the true mints. So we've got cotton candy, spearmint, apple mint, and this is also a way of protecting them so that, protecting the rest of the garden, I should say, so it doesn't get too aggressive. We have some different other herbs in here. We've got some silvery ones like the curry, the cardoon, and the fishbone lavender. And then there's one I want to show you over here. I've been meaning to do a segment on it, but I just haven't. And it's really not looking its best right now, so forgive me, but um, this is actually called cardinal basil. Um, and I just love it because look at this flower that you get on it. I know a lot of times we grow basil, obviously, for the foliage to add into different um, culinary things or into your water. But look at that flower. It's just beautiful on here. So um, one you might want to try if you're into herbs is cardinal basil. And it does have a very basil fragrance to it. And then as we come around, you can head on into the water garden area where we've got some goldfish darting about.
So as we walk between the water garden and the Japanese garden, you get this lovely shade garden. And this is one of the favorite places for visitors to come find, especially in August, because it's just amazing how a shade garden can just lower the temperature. Um, it's also quieter. You hear more insects kind of making noises in here. Um, and then we have a few water features around that are just a soft bubbler to kind of create this relaxing um, atmosphere. So I know one of the big questions that master gardeners often get is what to do under those trees that are sucking all that moisture up and stuff. So here is a good example of what plants work well under tree roots. So we've got a couple of different trees. We've got some ginkgos, we've got a birch, we've got some uh, uh, ash trees, different things like that. But you can see we've got a mix of both annuals, perennials, and woody shrubby plants underneath these trees. Um, and there's still a lot of color under here. While you might not get the flowers all the time with a shade garden, you get a lot of color in the vegetative foliage. So that's something that's important to pay attention to when you're shade gardening. And this is a great place to get those ideas. So one thing you'll notice that's new about the west side of a garden here is if you normally come in on that north entrance to our gravel parking lot, you will notice this new nice pavered sidewalk. And so a lot of times when we've had visitors out here, they have a hard time walking on the gravel. And so this is a really nice addition. And what's even more exciting about this is it wasn't just done by some contractor. This actually was a class project. And that's another interesting feature about the Botanic Gardens here at OSU is that so many of the projects and gardens that you see are part of student projects and class projects. Um, this is a teaching garden. And so, and Cowboy always finds us when we're on camera, it never fails. But it's a teaching garden. And so it's really nice that you see the work of the students and they're getting something out of it as well. So we have a new chicken coop that I want to mention. Um, going forward, we're going to kind of talk about some of the newer things that are happening here at the gardens. Um, and that's one of them. If you have come previously, you might remember the old um, chicken moat that was down on the east side. But this is something that's new. That chicken moat was 20 years old. It was time to refresh it and give those chickens an upgrade. This is a new addition too. It's a about two years old um, and if you're a fan of the gardens and Oklahoma gardening you may remember back probably 20 years ago we had a train garden and it was just so popular and so we decided to bring back the train garden. Um, this has two different train loops um, and just is quite popular especially amongst the kids um, and you'll and off, obviously Harry Potter fans as well. <laughs> Um, and so you'll see this running on our open houses on Saturdays. Um, we usually have it running during game days also, and then any special events that we have going on. So this is a fun little feature to the garden. Now, as we walk along our path a little bit more, there's a couple of other features I wanna mention. And one of them is um, with all of our events that we've been having out here, there's been a lot more public coming, which is a great thing. We enjoy the public. We are a public garden after all. Um, but we, we like to have different events to host for them. And one of those things is our concert series. So we always have concerts in the spring and the fall, but the people will line up, um, or not line up, but bring their picnics, bring their blankets, bring their chairs, and kind of set out underneath those uh, sycamore trees. And the band will be here under Laura's bandstand. And the bandstand is named for our very own field producer, Laura Payne, who has been working for 20 plus years in that capacity, as well as being the volunteer and education coordinator here at the Botanic Gardens. When it's not being used by the concerts, a lot of people just bring their lunch and enjoy the shade here. And then behind us here, you might remember, is the sensory garden. So this sensory garden has five different rooms. Each room represents one of the senses that we have. And so as you walk through there, there's going to be different plants that kind of speak to those senses. 
So you'll notice between um, each room, as you enter to the next room, the threshold, the texture of the threshold changes, and also you'll feel that temperature change as you enter in. Again, highlighting that something is changing about my environment and I'm going into a different space. So that's a neat garden to kind of check out. Um, in the sound garden, we have plants that kind of rustle and make different sounds. Um, obviously, in the sight garden, we have a lot of color in there. Um, this, the um, touch garden has a lot of different plants that have texture to them. And so it's just a fun place to discover and explore plants in a different way than you might have thought about them previously. So one of the newest features here at the Botanic Garden, because of all the events that are happening in the public that's been coming in, is we've had a lot of people say, your gravel road is not the best way to get in here, depending on weather, you know, it's kind of a tough situation. So now you don't have to worry about the weather when you come here, as far as the roads go, because we've got this new beautiful paved uh, parking lot just off of Highway 51, that's our south entrance. As we come into the gardens, and again, this is all south of what is the main gardens that you might be familiar with, we've established a new collection of plants here. And this is called the Carl Whitcomb Collection, or the Whitcomb Collection. Dr. Carl Whitcomb was a former professor here at OSU and really got into plant breeding and research and ended up going out on his own with and starting the Lace Bark Incorporated Company um, and now sells a lot of different plants that he has personally bred. And he's right here in Stillwater too. And so we know that these do well here in Oklahoma. Of course, one of our popular plants um, and that he's known for are the crepe myrtles, but there's some other plants that he's breeding as well, including Rose of Sharon, and then this alley of his city slicker river birches that do well in our heat. Next to the Wickham collection, we also have a garden labyrinth. Now, a lot of times when we say labyrinth, we might mistakenly interchange the word labyrinth for maze, but a garden labyrinth is different than a garden maze. A maze is meant to confuse you. There's a lot of different options. Do I go left? Do I go right? There's a dead end, you know, and that sort of thing. A labyrinth, there's actually only one pathway for you to follow, and it's a set path. You have to follow that. And the intention is not for you to think about which way to go, but to think about and relax and to reflect on a situation that you might be thinking about. So it's more of a meditative experience as you follow that path to the center of the labyrinth. We did a segment on this actually that you might be familiar with, with the psychology department. So it's interesting how even something that seems completely removed from horticulture is connected to plants itself. So this is one labyrinth that's just made out of mowed Bermuda grass. And so it's a nice little feature. And of course, kids love running through it, whether it's a maze or a labyrinth. Now next to the labyrinth, across the path here, we have our uh, prairie restoration project. We are, after all, in Oklahoma. We're in the middle of the prairie. And so we want to showcase those prairie plants. So we go from the short grass prairie that's near our vegetable and orchard um, all the way up to a tall grass prairie. So we've got several different grasses and forbs mixed in here. Um, and we work with the Natural Resource Ecology and Management Department to actually manage this garden space to make sure there's no noxious weeds that are getting in and that it's only appropriate plants. This is also a lot of student volunteer that kind of help manage this as well. Here we are in another one of our newest features, and this is known as the Tree Walk Village, which actually just got installed back last winter. So a lot of people are just now discovering this, and this was funded through a grant. Um, and what's neat about this is it is three different platforms, but only this first platform has actually got piers. The other two are anchored to the tree properly, of course. We are a botanical garden. So they're anchored to the tree so that you really get that feeling of being up in the tree. And this is just a neat way, again, a different way to observe a garden. A lot of times we don't actually get up into the canopy of the tree and get to experience it. And what's even more exciting is there are um, funds in place now to expand this. So we'll be looking forward to that in the future. This is again just off of our south entrance from Highway 51. So 
that about covers our garden tour for today. We've gone from the back door to our new front door entrance here off of Highway 51. And we enjoy touring with you guys and we hope that someday soon we can do it in person. And again, you're always welcome here, whether it's off of our Highway 51 entrance or our north entrance, come visit us at the Botanic Garden at OSU. There are a lot of great horticulture activities this time of year. Be sure and consider some of these events in the weeks ahead. Next week, we are back in the gardens to take a look at yuccas. Then we visit a community food garden. And finally, I'll show you how to turn a traditional garden object into a creative display. To find out more information about show topics as well as recipes, videos, articles, fact sheets, and other resources, including a directory of local extension offices, be sure to visit our website at oklahomagardening.okstate.edu. And we always have great information, answers to questions, photos, and gardening discussion on your favorite social media as well. Join in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find this entire show and other recent shows as well as individual segments on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. Tune in to our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel to watch segments from previous hosts. Oklahoma Gardening is produced by the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University. The Botanic Garden at OSU is home to our studio gardens, and we encourage you to come visit this beautiful Stillwater gem. We would like to thank our generous underwriter, the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry. Additional support is also provided by Pond Pro Shops, Greenleaf Nursery and the Garden Debut Plants, the Oklahoma Horticultural Society, and Tulsa Garden Club. <laughs>